thank you for staying with us. So I think we've, we've um, gotten Professor Chris back and um, <laughs> the ladies <laughs> as the power of technology. All right, so Prof, I, was, um, I asked the question about, you know, uh, nepotism being tied to an individual. So if we want to achieve inclusivity in governance, can't we put a structure in place where regardless of who is in power, you must follow the rules? Let me say clearly uh, and very importantly that if we have a national assembly that lives true to its constitutional provision, if we have a national assembly that is less partisan than it is today, if we have a national assembly that takes seriously its oversight functions, then no president will take for granted the provisions of Chapter 2 of the Nigerian Constitution until, and this is seriously uh, speaking, until we have a nation where uh, governance becomes absolutely responsible and responsive to the people, and we have a nation where uh, the people come before individualism. Until we have a nation where responsible, uh, responsive leadership takes primacy over partisanship, the National Assembly must save us from such mess where uh, leadership decides to govern with um, tendentious whims and caprices that uh, do not help for inclusiveness. And I say this strongly. Some people have said that, oh, this uh, call for Biafra, call for Old Dua Republic, call for the Middle Belt uh, Enterprise, and call for restructuring is because some people were not, uh, uh, did not get appointments. Some have made it so simplistic as saying that, oh, it's all partisan. But it is not. If we had a president, or if we have a president who decides to rethink and do what is proper, try to write, some of these calls will die naturally. And I say this advisedly. The evil man in Nigeria wants to live in a country where justice, equity, inclusiveness, and fair play is the order of the day. The Yoruba man wants a country where justice, fairness, and equity is the minimum. The South South man wants inclusiveness in a country where his resources fence and takes care of whatever happens in this country. And so does the man in the, in the, in the North Central, in the states of Kogi, Benue, and the likes. They want a country where um, every person has a true sense of belonging. And unfortunately, and I say this seriously, uh, we have seen, um, like you noted, I saw the pictures that you, sent, you put out um, since 1999. In, precisely between 2015 and now, we've had the same zone, the same tendency, the same coloration, the same creed as IG of police. Is that the president saying that we don't have competent hands from the other zones? Okay, Is that so what he's saying to us? I, I, I like what forget. you're saying, Prof. I like what you're saying about things. competency. I like what you said about competency because when I put this picture on my status, one of our anchors, um, Uti, says... She's asking that, is this supposed to be inclusivity or competence, right? That we should, we should um, almost like saying that most times, are we not, you know, um, shifting the goalposts or changing the, where the focus should be? So I, I now pose the question to her. Does, does, is she trying to tell me that there are no competent people across Nigeria, across all regions in Nigeria? Because so this, a lot of people have argued that shouldn't it be merit that should be the, the conversation, right, when it comes to appointments, you know? And, and I'm saying that in terms of merit, every region have brilliant minds that you can pick from. You just need to look harder to Absolutely. find those minds, right? So, I mean... Absolutely well. Well, let me say this clearly, that I'm from a small town called Ibuza in Delta State. Yeah. And in that town called Ibuza, we have competent minds, we have beautiful engineers, we have smart lawyers, we have smart bankers. At some point in, in our banking evolution, Ibuza alone produced three bank uh, MDs. And when people make arguments that are less than proper, when people make arguments that are not properly researched, it bothers me and troubles the carapace of my mind. There is no zone in this country 
that does not have competent hands. Absolutely. There is no space in this country that does not have competent hands. So that argument is not tenable. It's basically partisan than logical. Mm. And I think that the time has come for us to tell our president that across the length and breadth of our country, we have competent hands that can do justice to whatever subject and, and, and space. We have competent hands that can police this country. We have competent hands that can manage the NPA. We have competent hands that can manage the Ministry of, of Finance. And beyond the logic or the argument of those is comfortable with, if, if they continue to make that argument, then they are not doing great service to the president. Absolutely. Because the president of Nigeria should have friends, friends across Nigeria. He should have friends who are Yoruba, Zibos, Aousas, Fulanese, Thieves, Idomas. So if they are trying to tell us that a president does not have people outside his space that he can trust, then they are telling us that our president is incompetent. Of being the president, capacity. absolutely. All right, so let me hear your final thoughts, Jennifer and Tammy, quickly because we ran out of time. Jennifer, come, let me come to you first. Jennifer, are you there? Did we lose Jennifer again? Tammy, are you there? Yes, I am. Go ahead, Je Tammy. Um, my, mine is a question. Oh, can I ask a question? Quickly, in one minute. And Prof, you is have to be there enough time. Yeah, we just have one okay, minute. So, I heard, so in the middle of this conversation, I had thought with so many times to uh, leaving a particular political party and being back there. And one thought that has been on my mind, the so one question that has bothered me for a while, is as Nigeria, I mean, it's what 2023 election. What should be priority for us? Is it the political party or the person? Is it the party that makes the person in Nigeria or the person who's going to the party? Which should we focus on? Okay, Prof, quickly. I wish I could appreciate, but I hope you understand my question. He understands. Yeah, Prof, I do. Prof, quickly, in one minute. <laughs> Let me say clearly that uh, I'd rather a country where the person comes first. But unfortunately, our Electoral Act says that no individual contests an election, that is the political party that builds a candidate. And so until we have... A, a, an electoral act that allows for competency and individual candidacy. Until we have an electoral act that even allows for individual uh, candidacy, um, we still have the parties that, as, as, a, as a major uh, contestant in elective, electoral processes. So what do we do? We, we have to politic based on partisanship. Uh, but chiefly, I think that what we must begin to do as a people is begin to mobilize uh, for better, the best candidates across parties, indiscriminate of whether the PDP, APC, um, APGA, or the likes. We must look for the best hands and we must ask for how they present and defend the manifestos of their party. That's what I think. And, and that's uh, sooner rather than later, we may have. Uh, a situation where we can present individual and independent candidates in electoral process. Prof, you know me, we, we campaigned very well for this uh, current government, and now we are suffering it. This one that you are telling me that you have gone back to that party, it is you and yourself alone. I'm going to bring you back. <laughs> I'm going to bring you back for us to talk about that one, because that one is another kind of home that you have opened. You know, we have to talk about that Why, one. Why, George is small. Huh? Well, I judge you small. I'm judging you a little. Please. A little. Please, oh, I've, 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 become your friend. I've asked for forgiveness. If you see the way I campaign, you will think that they gave me money to do this campaign. I know. Because we, we all believed that he was, you know, truly going to fight, you know, corruption. And the one thing that we trusted our president with, you know, has been the biggest, you know, um, my own, in my opinion, the biggest place that he has failed us as a people. So we're just hoping. Chris, I'm going to... Well, the, the reason... The reason Evil triumphs is when good men hold their hands and watch mouths are gift and Absolutely. how they are I think that the first thing we must do is to think about how we can transform the system from within. We will. We'll try. So we'll bring you back, Prof, to talk about that, how we can transform the system. But it's only you that will be within. I will be outside. <laughs> 
All right. So, <laughs> thank you. No way. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Tammy. All right. So Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, and influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching Waze and follow us on all our social media handles, as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on Waze. Now, in case you missed today's quote, this very important quote, here it is again. Discrimination is never fair. It's a killer, in fact. Nepotism in place of power is a killer, like Adolf Hitler. Now, we'll see you live tomorrow. It's our ladies' night out. So we're going to bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.